In this video, we are going to focus solely on root fractures. As the name implies, a root fracture is a fracture that is exclusively confined to the root of the tooth involving the cementum, dentin, and pulpal tissue. When a tooth has a root fracture, in some cases the coronal part of the tooth above the fractured area may be loose or mobile. If the coronal portion of the tooth is mobile, it will affect how you treat the tooth. As with any injury, make sure you complete pulp sensibility testing. And do not be surprised if the pulp sensibility testing gives you a negative result or a lack of response to cold testing. This lack of response could be a transient lack of response or represent permanent damage to the pulp tissue. The initial pulp test will serve as a baseline and at future follow-up visits, the pulp will need to be retested. If the pulp continues to be non-responsive to cold, it is likely due to the pulp losing blood supply and subsequent pulp necrosis. Radiographs will be helpful in diagnosing this type of injury. A radiograph will usually depict a fracture and uh, expect to see it in the horizontal or the diagonal plane. Occlusal radiographs are useful for seeing root fractures in the apical and middle third of the root. Taking periapical exposures at varying uh, horizontal angles will help to see fractures in the coronal and cervical third of the root. Because a root fracture can occur anywhere on the root and because a root fracture can occur without increased mobility of the coronal portion of the tooth, this really demonstrates the importance of radiographs with all dental trauma injuries. Even with, uh, when a patient presents with like a chipped incisor in the enamel only, I still take radiographs. Why? Because of the possibility of a root fracture. You cannot rule it out unless you take a radiograph. So the takeaway is when you are seeing a patient with dental trauma, always, always take a radiograph. The treatment for a root fracture depends on whether or not the coronal segment has come completely out of the mouth or not. If the coronal segment has been knocked out of the mouth, then you need to refer to the avulsion guidelines for treatment. If, however, the coronal segment is still attached or attached and even loose, the treatment will be pretty similar. The guide will give you more details, but the big points are to reposition the coronal segment if necessary and verify with a radiograph. Stabilize the tooth with a flexible splint for a minimum of four weeks. Four weeks is best for fractures in the apical or middle third without mobile coronal segments. If the root fracture is in the cervical third and or the coronal portion is mobile, it may be best to stabilize the coronal segment with a flexible splint for up to four months. This guide covers patient instructions and follow-up. The first follow-up visit is usually for splint removal or at the six to eight week mark to recheck pulp vitality. It will be very important to monitor the pulp for the first few weeks. If after three months of follow-up, the pulp continues not to respond to cold testing, then you really should decide to complete root canal therapy. Root canal therapy may only be indicated for the coronal segment to the fracture line as the apical portion of the root often remains vital. Uh, this may be a situation where you consider a referral to an endodontist for non-surgical root canal therapy. So that will be it for root fractures. I know it was kind of short. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. Next, we will discuss uh, concussion injuries and subluxation injuries.